Hey everybody, guess what day it is today? Yes, it is in fact May Google Be With You launch day. And I'm sitting here wearing my Sunstorm Trooper shirt, my Princess Leia buns, and I'm ready to show you the very exciting month we're going to have with Google. So let me just take care of this. There you go. Hey everybody, it's Trisha from the MTech team, and I'm very excited to bring us our very first episode one of our May Google Be With You month-long adventure using Google tips, tricks, tools, resources. It's going to be a really exciting month, so thank you for signing up. In fact, on the first day alone, 242 of you have signed up for this PD, so it's even bigger than a Google Summit. So in honor of that, the first thing that I want to do is I think we need to give away some prizes. There we go. That's not a soundtrack from a horror movie. I believe that is our beloved Dane saying, Luke, I love your prizes. So here we go. What I've done first is I've taken all of your names, I've put it into a random prize generator, and so we're going to kick off the celebration first with a little prize draw before we jump into our day one episode, which is using Google Chrome. And so this is what your prize is gonna be. We're actually giving away a set of Bloxels. And what really excites me about this is you have the opportunity to be able to do um, some coding and some video game design and bring learning to life. But look at what's at the top. You can even build your own Star Wars game. So this is a really exciting educational tool and we're going to see who's going to win right away. All of your names are in here, all 242. And we're kicking off the prize draw with Brittany Mitchell. You have won our very first episode one prize. We're gonna be giving away prizes all month long, and so I will IMC your prize to you at your school. So let's get started. We're gonna kick off our very first episode by using Google Chrome. And so this is our browser uh, that basically has all things Google for us. And so it doesn't matter if we're using a PC or a laptop or a MacBook or a Chromebook, we wanna be inside that Chrome browser in order to do everything. So I'm gonna show you some really important tips and tricks in using this Chrome browser. So if you wanna follow along with the tutorial, I think that's great. You can do what I'm doing. You can pause me repeat the things that you're seeing or use these tutorials in order to share with your staff as well. So the first we're going to do is going to make sure that we uh, open up our Chrome browser and we know that in ECSD we are automatically prompted to sign into our Chrome browser using our Google account and our ECSD account is our Google account. It's also our Office 365 account. It's also our Discovery Education account. But did you know that we can manage the users inside of our Chrome browser, especially if some of us have personal accounts or school accounts? So let me show you what that looks like. So we'll get off of our prize draw here and we'll just kind of get over here. And what I want to show you is when you are signed into Chrome, in the very top right hand corner, you're going to see your little picture, um, your avatar that's there. And when you click that, you're going to be able to see that that's what you're logged in as. But you're also going to notice that there is a place to manage some people. And when you go ahead and you go to manage some people, you're going to notice that this is where you can have multiple Google Chrome accounts. And so you'll see in the bottom right, I can go ahead, I could add a person. So I could add a personal account. And you can see I do have a personal account in there, the multiple personalities of Trish. I have my mTech account, I have some demo accounts. And so it's just really important to know that you're logged in um, with your Edmonton Catholic Schools account when it comes to using a lot of these tips and tricks and tools just in order to be able to get the most out of the apps and the extensions and the nice little shortcuts and things that we've given you. But also knowing you can switch back and forth when you need to. So that was tip number one. The next thing I want to show you is I want to be able to show you how we can go ahead and we can use our actual search bar. Now we know that when we're in our, our Chrome environment, the number one thing we probably do every day is we like to Google something. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like here. Whenever you're in the Chrome browser, as soon as you go ahead and you open up a new tab, what it does is it takes you to that mission control, that Google landing page, where we go ahead and we do those Google searches. I can do the Google search right here on that main page, but did you know that that Omnibox at the top of your browser is multiple things. It's not just for addresses of websites. It's also your Google search right here. 
And so I could be able to search for, maybe I'm looking for um, um, some, maybe some Google for education. So I'm gonna take a look and I'm gonna look at some of these solutions. Here we have great sites, uh, great training materials for you for Google for education. Now, there's more things that you can do with this Omnibox. Did you know that not only is it search that you can find those different pieces, um, it also could be your coin flipper. It's interactive and it's live and it can flip a coin. You can also do roll a die. It'll roll a die for you. Another really neat thing that you can do is you can actually even use it as a calculator. So you could go ahead and you could type in uh, uh, a math problem and what it'll do is it will pull up an interactive calculator that you can continue to use right there. And so your Omnibox is that built-in um, tool to really have information uh, for you and your students right at your fingertips. The other thing I don't know if you noticed is that when you're inside that Omnibox, there's also a search by voice feature. This is a very powerful assistive technology tool because we're able to make sure that our students who maybe need a little bit of support or even just ourselves when we're quickly trying to look something up. So a fun activity, if you're maybe doing some math, some probability, you wanna do some of that dice or that coin flipping, is you can even have kids use that voice search and just simply say, flip a coin roll a die, and then that Omnibox will take care of that for you. Now, another thing I wanna show you when students are doing Google searches is how to make sure that you are doing advanced Google searches where you can control what students are, the type of content they're seeing. But I also know that students really like to look up Google images, and that's great for their projects and things that we're working on, but we really want students to make sure that they're using content that is appropriate um, for school, um, but also that sort of meets that uh, uh, Creative Commons copyright free and able to use for school. So let's do a Google search. In this particular case, I'm going to look up some information about Earth. So when I search here, one of the things that I'll see is it will pull up things like some quick facts, um, some information from Wikipedia. I'm going to see news articles, websites, all of those different pieces that are in here. And students do often like to go to images and these images aren't all available to be able to take and use. So um, what you can actually look at here is that there is a tools feature when you're doing a search. And what's nice about this is now students can start to look for things like perhaps they're looking for a specific color of an icon. In this case, they can look for color palettes or they can have a transparent icon, which will allow them to have no background. This one is really important here. This is the usage rights. This is what it tells us what we're allowed to be able to use um, in an educational setting. And you can see that the default is that it's not filtered by license. So it is important for students to be able to choose labeled for non-commercial reuse if they're simply going to use it as part of maybe a project that they're building such as Google Sites or even in Google Slides. So it really just depends on what it is that they're trying to be able to use this for. So that will limit those different types of things that they're looking for. You can also look for the type of image that you're searching for. Included, we can find animated GIFs if we wanted to. And this is just a great way for kids to learn that they're in control of what they're looking for in a Google search in order for them to use their projects. So it's really nice and easy, and we can make sure that kids are able to find those different images, but this also applies to the Google Sites that we're looking for. We can have some filtering tools that will help our students make some good choices. So just note when I'm back on that main search page under all, I do have some tools, again, and I can look at what type of results I'm looking for, and I can also look at um, what time that I want those results from. You know, the World Wide Web is quite an old space right now. There's a lot of things on the internet. And so this way we can make sure that students are, are learning that they're finding the most up-to-date and current information. As well as there is a settings feature. What I like about the search settings is it does allow students to be able to customize and really look at what they're trying to search for. And so you can look at regional settings so that you can have things that are maybe um, set to um, something that's specifically Canadian if you would like. Um, another thing that you can look at doing 
is you can also use those settings and you can actually change it and look at the languages that your search is available to be in, which is really nice for our students who are English language learners or perhaps in one of our bilingual um, and dual track schools. So that search is something that is really important for students to be able to know. And sometimes us, even as teachers, we don't know that we can be able to customize those searches in order to save us a lot of time searching through terabytes of information on the World Wide Web as we're just simply doing that Google search. So now what happens when we find some great information? Well, we often save things to bookmarks. Now, I don't know if you're like me and you just, you star things, you save it to bookmarks it can get crazy. Suddenly we just have lists of hundreds and hundreds of things that we have bookmarked with all of the good intention of being able to go back and look at it. Um, but it's really hard to find. Well, what's nice about Google Chrome is we do have some really great uh, bookmark features that can help us and our students stay nice and organized so everything is at our fingertips. So I'm gonna show you um, three really important bookmark features. One, our ECSD bookmarks that we have already set up for everybody. Two, we do have our bookmarks browser bar so that uh, we can have things right across the top, right at our fingertips. And I'm gonna show you how to edit that. And then three, there is an actual bookmark manager that's built into Chrome so that we can organize things according to folders and topics and be able to drag and drop. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna look at this Chrome browser. And what we can see here along the top is I have my Omnibox where my address bar is. I also have all these small icons beside it. Those are my extensions. Those are the little extras that uh, typical apps can't do. And we're going to be talking about apps and extensions in one of our later episodes. And then this is our browser bar and our bookmark bar. And so right across here where I can see some of these larger, longer titles, I can see those different things that I have bookmarked. Now, whenever you are searching for something, so again, I'm going ahead and I did a nice search about Earth. I wanna be able to find out um, you know, what's going on. Can we protect Earth from asteroids? Maybe I wanna look about the new Google Earth that we're gonna be talking about in some later episodes. And so when you come here and you find something you wanna keep, we like to hit that star. We like to say to bookmark that page. And so that's something I'm going to show you how to do too. But first, Everybody who is signed into the Google Chrome browser with their Edmonton Catholic Schools account, you're going to see this really awesome and at your fingertips folder called ecsd.net bookmarks. And this is where we have the top different sites and services that staff and students use in Edmonton Catholic Schools. And so you're going to see things like a quick way to get kids to their Google Classroom or their Google Drive maybe Discovery Education or their Office 365 tools and email, um, Password Reset. It's all in here to make life a lot easier than kids having to navigate or type these different addresses. The other thing we have is the ability to add things to this bookmark bar along here. And you can see that I have some things like our MTech Google support site, um, the awesome KA robots. I've saved all of these different pages on my bookmark bar. How I do that is I like to give it a star. When you give it a star, that is actually bookmarking it. You have the choice to change the name of what the bookmark is. This is really handy for those sites that have very long URL addresses and not necessarily a name, or you can also have students be able to give it a name that makes sense to them. It's then going to ask you, where would you like to put that, that star? Where would you like to be able to put that? Do you have some folders you've created? or are you putting it straight on your bookmarks bar? In this case, I'm just gonna throw in our bookmark bar because I wanna show you how I can edit it. Done. Now, you can see that I have a lot of things along here on my bookmark bar, and if I click this little couple of arrows on the right-hand side, oh, Trish has been naughty. I have a lot of things that are just loose and not necessarily in folders. So I'm gonna do a little bit of organizing here. First of all, whenever I have some of these longer names of things that are on my bookmark bar, what I can do is I can actually right click on any of those. I can go ahead and I can edit that bookmark. And I can also just then get rid of that name or call it something smaller. And then that way, all I'll see is the favicon. 
A favicon is these little tiny logos that belong to each one of these different websites and bookmarks that I've created. So getting rid of that long title simply saves some space along my bookmark bar, but I can remember how to get to the MTech Google support site because I know what that icon looks like and here I am back again. So it is really handy for you to be able to manage and use those different pieces. Now, what about all this great big mess that I've got going on in here? Well, did you know that you can create and organize folders using your bookmark manager? You're looking for the three little dots on the right hand side of your browser next to where you managed your users. When I click that, what I'm gonna see is I'm all gonna see that bookmark and I'm looking for bookmark manager. There's also a shortcut, control shift O, or you can just simply Google bookmark manager and it will also take you there as well. When I open up my bookmark manager, something that's really handy is I can search my bookmarks. So instead of me having to remember what was that again, I can start to type what it was that I was looking for and things that I just bookmarked. Oh, look, I just bookmarked Google Earth. There it is. But one of the things you noticed is I didn't put it in a folder. Well, you know what? It's not too late. I can simply drag it over and I can put it into the folder that I want to be able to put it in. Um, I also have the lovely little three dots so I can say, look, I want to be able to show it in the folder. Maybe I still want to edit that bookmark right from here and give it a different name. And it allows you to open it up in new tabs and new windows. Another thing that you can do is you're able to click the three little dots right next to that search and that's your organize feature inside your bookmarks. This is where I can sort my bookmarks, add new folders and all those different pieces. So I'm going to get out of this search feature here. I'm going to go to my organize. I can sort all my bookmarks by name. Now it'll organize all of my folders by name that I had and any loose bookmarks that I also had. And you can see I've edited a lot of my bookmarks, so I only have favicons. Now, any of these things at any time, if I'm like, no, I really actually do want that to be organized better and put that into some folders, just go ahead and be able to put those different pieces into a folder. You can go ahead and just drag that right over where it belongs to, and then it'll be long in that folder now. One other thing that's really handy is maybe I've saved quite a few different things, like maybe I've been collecting some emerging tech and trends. Something that you can do is if I go to that uh, three dots, I can see, oh look, I have five bookmarks in that folder and I can even open up all of those bookmarks right now. This is handy if you wanted to be able to create some bookmarks for a project that you have for students and you wanna be able to kind of gather those in a nice place and have them all put together. So there you have it. I hope you're feeling a little bit more confident using Google Chrome, being able to navigate to some different sites, being able to save and organize your sites, and just have your students be able to have those important things at their fingertips. Now, I wanna show you one more little lovely trick that allows you to be able to simply drag an address and put it straight onto your bookmark bar. And this is something that uh, saves a lot of time, but it's also fun to be able to show your students if you want them always to be able to get to that same page. So in this particular case, I was looking up, oh yeah, how did Trish create and view and edit all those bookmarks? I really want to save this bookmark. I can go ahead and hit that little star, but did you know you can also simply select that address and drag it straight down onto your bookmark bar and it'll be sitting there for you. And so the next time you open up a new tab or go do something different, you would be able to click and still see that saved thing. So right here, I'm on our Bloxel winner site, but I can get right back to that lovely uh, bookmark that I just created and drug down on to my bookmark bar. So it's a little bit of magic for you there, but those handy little tips make life a whole lot easier. I hope you enjoyed episode one. Uh, congratulations to our prize winner. It's not too late for registration. So if you know some friends or colleagues who wanna get in on the fun, we're gonna start jumping into educational tips and tricks and tutorials using all the different Google tools, including a lot of classroom templates and resources that have been created by me, uh, colleagues from other school districts, and our very own ECSD Google Ninjas. So you're gonna see a birthday party loot bag of things to take away every day and use right away with your kids. Thanks for participating in our geeky fun. Uh, thanks for putting up the Star Wars theme. Uh, you know, it's May the 4th be with you here right away. So today I say good night and may Google be with you and I will see you all tomorrow.
Bye, everybody.